Okay. The first one, Aljona Melnik. I don't think is here, right? No. Okay, let's go next. Oh, welcome to Blue Hen, everybody. Yeah. And uh, so I mostly I try to uh, be, we try to put the European artists uh, in the beginning uh, because it's late over there. Uh, not with us either. We have Irinka. She's not with us either, right? Nine. Okay. Kate Andrews. Uh, she's in, uh, that's the name that she goes by, but she's in Ukraine. I don't see that we have her. Okay. Nine. There's another one by her. I know, I love those two. Mm -hmm. And here we are at um, the Rose, but I cannot say the name, but she's not oh. here, right? Oh, mm -hmm. No. Okay. Those are two pieces. Uh, mm -hmm. All they know. Is Olena here? No, Olena. Here we go. Polly Polyankova. Not here either. No. Very uh, colorful. Penny. Penny is up. Where did Penny go? Uh-oh. Here I am. There we go. <laughs> here I am. So I have it here. It's uh, okay. very three-dimensional, and I actually drew it with this exhibition in mind. So it was really exciting when you chose it without knowing that. Um, so I um, basically, most of my work before has been very much black and white. You can see behind me kind of um, lots of life drawing with charcoal. But um, I'm really experimenting these days with inks, with oils, um, and just it's kind of like a whole journey going on at the moment with the different uh, mediums. So today I was out in the art shop and I was seeing a new thing called pouring, but I haven't done pouring before. So I didn't actually buy it, but I'm kind of thinking I'm earmarking it for my birthday present from my kids or something. <laughs> but anyway, to tell you about this, it's um, I think it's uh, it's just the whole idea of just really um going with the process. I know we talked about it before that whole thing of accidents, nice accidents that happen on the page, and it's like trusting that um, and it just uh, it's very exciting. You never know quite what's going to happen. So um, uh, the other thing I've done lately is learning how to do still lifes. I might have said this before, going to a class and actually learning how to do it really properly. So the combination of the accidents and the learning is just proving to be um, very exciting for me. So um, I've done, uh, yeah, that's really uh, what I wanted to say. I went, I went to a fantastic exhibition in Hamburg just last week and saw some Renoir uh, still lifes with flowers and fruit and uh, it was just amazing to get that close to a Ren. Actually that, that was in, I was in Bordeaux as well in France and I really recommend if anyone gets to Europe to go to Bordeaux um, and a, a beautiful uh, gallery there, the Gallery des Beaux-Arts and in there was the Renoirs but I was also in the Hamburg um, gallery as well last week and it blew my mind it was so big i've never seen it I, I was falling over amazing art so anyway thank you so much for selecting it thank you it's very very pretty we both were like oh this colors too you know it was just yeah. amazing thank you i think <laughs> i even have johnny depp's finger in the middle of it uh, do you see it there? <laughs> it there? looks like it it looks like it <laughs> <laughs> funny. You're never done learning i love that you keep exploring different methods and and things to do but uh it always ends up in something great oh thank you eugene hmm. oh yeah sorry anyone else 
It's very striking. I really love it. Good There's job. a nice, a nice bit of depth too, like maybe the stencil, the the centerpiece, but the, can you see the, like the, the shadow around the centerpiece? Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's a lot of depth going on. It's kind of it's great. It looks kind of like a like a kind of a printmaking technique or something. Mm -hmm. Penny, I really love the color choices. Um, it's very vibrant, and I'm so glad you showed us the 3D effect and how it kind of flutters when you move it. It brings it to life. It really has a lot of um, a lot of life to it, and you, it would be great in a gallery because you want to see it in person. You want to experience that, especially if it had like a fan on it and it was always constantly moving. Oh yeah, um, that would be great. It's really, really something special. So thank you for sharing it. Well, thank you, Julie. It, I'll have to be really careful how I frame it. I'm not sure how to frame it, but I'll I'll have to think of something clever. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to the next artist. We have Saul. Not here, right? I don't think so. Let me peek. No, I don't believe we do. Okay. That's like another piece I, I love too. I know. It's beautiful. Yeah. Tatiana. No, Tatiana? Diana Zhvatkova, uh, no. Next, Austin, he's here. Yes. Hello. Um, hello, everyone. So today I'm going to be talking mm -hmm. about this piece um, that I did. This piece was actually a hibiscus uh, photo I initially took on my, on my phone. Um, and then I, I typically work with AI and machine learning, and I have a history of paintings I've done that have kind of captured my colors, style, my sort of um, brush strokes and everything. And I'm able to use that AI to learn from my past paintings and apply that same style into my new paint, um, pieces and repaint that photo in the style of my, of my like, sort of signature color palette and style and create this sort of rainbow hibiscus piece. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. You had another one, correct? Um, I've shown a couple of the other shows, but this is the only one for this one. Okay. Austin, I really love it. If I was a hummingbird, I would totally fly. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's gorgeous. I love how the tra how translucent it is and how the light goes through it mm -hmm. uh, and still illuminates the pistol. And then the like the that you even put the leaf there with that translucence there in front of it too so like you go into the, the piece Very how big good. is it um this one typically would be 24 by 24 there's a couple ways I, I reproduce them physically i sometimes do them on canvases with really sort of vibrant ink but i also sometimes do them on metal panels with like um, uv inks and that creates almost like a shimmer to the color so whenever i do sort of the, the mm -hmm. elements of light in the piece they really kind of become reflective and you see layers to the color you don't see otherwise which is cool as well um i also do holograms as well so sometimes i'll make a 3d effect or an animation and i'll kind of make it sort of move as you walk around it yeah this, this is go ahead kate oh i just wanted to say it's it's just gorgeous and luminous and i love that i love bringing ai in in such a new way and anyway fascinating concept mm -hmm. well thanks yeah i think a lot of people are using ai um they're kind of either borrowing from other artist styles or different things like that but what really mm -hmm. I think kind of sets my pieces apart is i'm training it on my own past paintings and my own signature yeah. style so i'm still sort of keeping it true to my own like sort of artistic vision when i'm using those ai sort of tools and the pieces and the compositions very cool if you guys want to see more of my stuff, I, I have my social media, B-O-C-A-A-U-S-T. Um, I've got a lot of really cool pieces like that there too, and a lot of really cool AI examples. Yeah. Eugene will post uh, all our IGs in the chat anyway, uh, okay. so we can all, you know, check each other's uh, other, other work out. But yeah, thank you. Anybody right, else? You, because you're doing the gallery, Connie, but I am posting those in the chat already for everybody. So oh, you did already. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I cannot look it up. Yeah. <laughs> All 
Okay. Um, I just wanted to sure. say, uh, I find this to be, um, when I look at it, the leaves to me look like peaches and it's the sensory response I have is the smell of peaches. Um, <laughs> isn't it funny? <laughs> But I love it. I love it. And um, the fact that it triggered that particular um, sensory for me. So thank you for that. I love peaches. <laughs> okay, let me go to the next piece. Thank you, Austin. Uh, Tiffany Maya. She with us. Uh, I do not see Tiffany. Oh, that's too bad. I love this piece as well. It's I know, and the fact that it's called the honeymoon. <laughs> the picture. Yeah. We're like Tiffany. You have to you have to explain something here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Next up, it's Vladimir. Vladimir She's in Ukraine, but I don't believe is with us. Nine. Okay. The next up. It was really nice too. We have a lot of uh, people from the Ukraine uh, exhibiting. Nice. Here we go, Natalia. Natalia is Ukraine as well. I don't believe she's with us right now. I don't think so either. It's also pretty late there. Yeah. Me! Julie. <laughs> It's me. Um, I'm so excited to be a part of the show. Thank you so much for the opportunity and thank you for selecting my piece to be in it. And um, I love this piece because um, I have a wonderful husband who spoils me with travel. He's German and he's actually in Cologne right now. And um, I was hoping he'd join us, but I think he's probably watching foosball or something. Probably. <laughs> 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 this piece anyhow we travel a lot and he took me to Monet's garden in Giverny in France and um, I was blown away by the sense of colors and the blue the peacefulness mm -hmm. of it but the vibrance of the colors and the sounds mm -hmm. and this is part of my auditory um, auditory perception series um, how the sounds of the birds and the calm the peacefulness but there's this explosion of color and it kind of draws you in and, and blurs, you know, as you mm. close your eyes or squint a little bit, everything kind of blurs and you, you get to feel the full experience. Mm. Um, anyhow, that's where I got it from. And I, again, I wouldn't be an artist without the love and support of my husband. And I certainly wouldn't have gone to Monet's garden. He takes me to the most beautiful places and it's just so inspiring. Mm. And I wish he was here, but you know, footy, it's footy. All right, <laughs> thank you. Oh, it's stunning, Julie. Thanks, Kate. Mm. What is, is it a painting or is it digital? What is it? It is a painting. It is a painting. It's an ombre painting. And um, I have it behind me. It is, I think, oh, geez, like two and a half feet by like three or four feet. I can't remember. I could, nah, I won't grab it. <laughs> it's behind <laughs> stuff. I have like art piled everywhere. Um, but it is a painting. It's acrylic on canvas. And um, I just love it. I love doing these ombre pieces and I love bold colors. You know, I feel like I have the freedom as an artist to really embrace color. And I'm a very expressive person and loud, as you can tell. <laughs> um, and it's a reflection of who I am as an artist. Probably look good horizontally as well. I'm just looking. Yeah, definitely over a couch. I can see it in a number of places. Mm -hmm. um, it was just so much fun to make. It was just so freeing and joyful. It was a really nice memory that I got to capture. And it, it, it really shows. I mean, it's fun. We, we can see it's fun. Totally. Thank and you. I love I love knowing it's from Monet's garden because it makes me see him in it oh, after, the, after the fact. You know? <laughs> it's mm -hmm. the most beautiful, tranquil place on earth. Like, no wonder he painted so much. Mm. And Julie, isn't it? I'm just thinking, you know, the way if you were to turn it around to the side, isn't that like Monet's? Did Monet do the lilies? Did, yeah. He did. It could very well be. It's sort of, if you put it around the other way, like, it, it definitely, it's very, very money. 
was so inspired. I'm glad everybody sees that. I really appreciated the experience and I'm glad I was able to translate some of it at least. Yeah, I just looked it up. So the uh, uh, dimension is 16 inches by 40. Okay. Yeah, it looks like a just very, very modern mm -hmm. Monet, like Monet if he was around now. <laughs> Thank you for mm. that. I love it. I, I was able to capture something special when I made it. I was like, wow, I'm really feeling how bold this piece is. Like I really felt it through my fingertips and um, I'm so grateful to have had that experience while painting. <laughs> All right, let me go to the next one. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Lori. Lori Markman, do we have Lori? I didn't um, see her before, but no, it does not look like you. And Adiola, who we usually have, but I didn't see her come on today. I didn't eat her. Yeah. It's very and she was at class this morning. We're taking a workshop together. So um, maybe she's still shopping or something. She might be <laughs> lost in her studio. <laughs> another one of hers there we go this is david i don't think david is here no i know david was gonna try and make it but he has a photo shoot today okay okay no mm -hmm. love for david <laughs> here we go eric i don't think eric is with us no Oh, I think Eugene is with us, though. Uh, yeah, I actually am, yeah, and mentally, too. That's great. <laughs> uh, hi, everybody. So this piece, uh, I did submit it for Blue Hen. Uh, it, on the, even though it's not really a floral piece, it kind of gives me a feel of a dark flower, but this one is called Lilith. And it's a companion piece. Uh, I actually joined, um, well, it's kind of a funny story with it. I joined uh, Art Lounge Collective, and uh, uh, the sad thing was is I had a ton of art on my walls, and Ryan Hennessy, who's also the president of Tag Gallery, came through to pick everything that was supposed to be exclusive to Art Lounge. Well, it was everything that was on my wall. <laughs> and then uh, my partner comes home, and he's like, oh, no, what happened? <laughs> and he loved all of those pieces, so I kind of made a second version of them, but I really, really love this one. And it, it's one where I tried to, the companion piece is called Persephone, but with Lilith being the first woman before Eve, uh, who basically told Adam to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> what he, said, what, what, uh, he told her to do and was demonized after that. So, uh, but the colors in this and how it came out, I'm very happy with the piece. Mm -hmm. So the dark flower of mythology, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, I, I love this piece too, Eugene. You know, I'm I'm a big yeah. fan of your art, and uh, I'm actually getting to uh, my my birthday presents. They're gonna come up this weekend. I'm gonna hang them up finally. Oh yay! Yes, <laughs> and um, it's. Uh, I think this is the first one. At first, I thought where I don't see a face, but it's not true because I see one again. So. <laughs> I'm actually, whew, thank goodness, you know, I thought I lost it. Um. <laughs> now they jump out of <laughs> Yeah, I love it. It's got so much depth. I love the thing. And is this acrylic on board, canvas? Acrylic on canvas, yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, I like the contrast between the, the clean white and then how it's more muted white and like messier on the left side. But yeah, it's cool. Oh, it is kind of harder to see because you can't really photograph metallic, but on the left, it's a uh, stainless steel metallic. Ooh, okay. So in person, it catches the light really well. I love that. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Thanks, guys. I want to see Persephone sometime. Oh, yeah. It's up on my... Uh, oh, wait. Oh, 
Before I say that, I better check and make sure, but I think Persephone might still be up there. I didn't take it down yet. On your website? I'll check it out, yeah. I'm reading, are the shadows made out of black or are they made out of dark, dark blue? So, uh, uh, oh, I did take Persephone down, but I'll have to show you sometime. Um, so I do, oh, the shadows in the background, that's yeah. actually dark blue. But what I also do is, uh, it was a, a painter mentor of mine taught me to do, is I'll paint all my canvases black uh, to start with. And I have, well, I've got t-shirts on it. But that's one of the canvases, but I'll paint them black. And then I take white over them in certain areas. And then when you layer colors on top of that, whatever's white will push the color forward and whatever's black that comes through will bring it back. So it kind of gives an additional depth to whatever paint to put over mm. top. Oh, nice technique. And it's perfect for Lilith who was so pushed into the background, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I find with the with, when I use white with the acrylics, I lose my white. I, it's like I use so much white and lose it. So that's an interesting way of maybe getting the white to pop. So yeah. Because I, I always get caught up in the paint and I lose it and it annoys me. That's why I used it as the as to make sure that layer was completely dried. And I used that as the very last color that I added. OK, that's a good idea. Yeah. It's so strong, it's just lovely. And the silver, is it, is, is it like silver, the, the left-hand side? Yes, yes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you've got to put that in a sunny room, in the sunlight. <laughs> it's really wonderful, Eugene. Thank you, guys. I, I love it. I'm very much in love with it. <laughs> All right, let's go to next. We have Jonathan. Jonathan Umlor, and I don't mm. hear, which I wish he was. This is actually his first time uh, submitting his photography to an exhibition. Mm. Yeah, it's very pretty. And these pieces are gorgeous. Mm. Tal. <laughs> uh, this is uh, Tal Baldman, yeah? Yeah. But she's not here, right? No, I don't think so. Paul. And this is Paul. Uh, I'm probably going to be terrible with his name. Where's Vicky? Uh, where's Vicky? Where's Vicky? Yeah, but he's not here too, right? No. He was also in my workshop this morning. Oh, really? <laughs> oh. Oh, wow, that's funny. We have our very own uh, Cornelia Connie Kurtzu. That's right. <laughs> so this wow. is um, just a piece of uh, Fleder in German. So it's a lilac, I think, in English. And uh, I seriously, I don't know how I missed that, but since I live in the U.S., which is 23 years, I never actually got to buy them. I never saw them in the store. And then somebody posted on Facebook that they got it like from Trader Joe's or something. And I was like, mm -hmm. where, what, whoa, what, what? So I like, I just got two big pieces um, at the same time. And I'm actually like sad, well, I should have got more, but the thing is, you know, they're all going to be gone at the same time too. But uh, I actually saved the stems and I put like growth on it. So I'm trying to grow it. So I don't know if this is going to work, but this is really, um, childhood memories what I said it's just the, the smell is just so mm -hmm. strong and so specific it just it's like I'm all over again in my grandma's garden and um, it just it just grows in Germany everywhere in spring and there's white too and there's like different colors but uh, I was so happy I had to photograph it <laughs> I love the background and how it relates. And I can totally relate to your experience of having lilacs in your childhood and it transporting you the smell. Yeah. I can smell it and it takes me back to the farm in Nebraska where I grew up. There were lilacs there and um, it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. When it starts blooming, it's just uh, explodes like everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
And the photograph is beautiful in the sense it looks like a painting. It looks like a, exactly. a master's painting. It's, it's, there's definitely a, a depth and a, um, you know, it's, it's beautiful, really. It's, 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 um, it's, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say, <laughs> but, um, but no, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of depth and, um, you know, it looks really great. Beautiful. Thank you. It makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> There's a real crispness. Like yeah, it, pop, it really pops. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad the background is there because it takes it to just like another step than just a, mm -hmm. the, I don't know, or maybe it is a studio portrait. I'm not sure, but it, it makes it takes it outside, but it also kind of makes it look like a, like the still life is just, um, mm -hmm. it's really important, but I'm kind of glad it's just like, doesn't go to all black or, you mm -hmm. know, or, um, you know, whatever, but. Yeah, I had the background gray and then um, took outside a sunset and I just put them together pretty much. Yeah, yeah. even the, the leaves are kind of like really painterly too, you know. Mm -hmm. And the, depth and, and the focus too, the depth yeah. of field is really like yeah. kind of just right. This I mean, plant was just perfect. That's the reason I had to snap a photo. <laughs> Few actually, but yeah. I have a whole lilac tree in my yard and it's, oh, just, okay. it's just blooming. Oh, it oh. smells heavenly. Yeah, it's so delicious. I think a, a, a solo plant I found in LA is the jasmine. This so when the true. jasmine, I have it in my garden too. So when this blooms, that's like, the smell is not relatable, but it's like, at least I get something which is so mm. strong, you know, when you just walk outside, oof, just, yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. It would be lovely, it would be lovely uh, coming as a kind of like a wall for a whole wall, you know, when people put a, a sort of a, an image on the whole wall, Mm -hmm. kind of like almost like a they don't call it wallpaper but when they do the whole image oh, sure. uh, in a, it'd be a really powerful one for for a, a, a kind of a feature wall yeah well thank you everyone thank you let's do it next we have Faina not with us Eugene Oh, uh, Faina's not with us today. Okay, that was pretty pretty too. And Holly, I didn't see Holly today. See Holly either. Okay. And next we have Krista. Krista. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just muted myself. Um, <laughs> yes, this is Hearts of Rose. Um, thank you, Connie and Eugene for including me in the Blue Hen exhibit. It's been nice to be here with all the artists and um, hear everybody. Um, so Hearts of Rose, it's an oil painting um, done with the Miche technique, which is the Dutch style masters from the 1500s, which is also very similar to um, Eugene, the underpainting of the black and then creating white as an, uh, a way of pulling out dimension and making the white stronger. I was inspired to um, paint this painting because I'm a um, I'm in health and I teach guided meditations with um, my people. And the one guided meditation that's very special to me is where you center yourself and your energy and your heart, and you practice the boundaries of the energetics of your heart. So you bloom your heart fully and openly and you expand your energy and then uh, feeling the bloom of yourself and then coming in and collecting all the energy that's in your heart and feeling the depth and of the heart like a bud would be. And um, I love the rose because it's a very high vibrational flower. And I was doing a, a series and I still love to continue the series of 
symmetry and playing with the geometry of the of the elements of like mirror images and balance and oppositional energy of movement of like tugging but staying magnetized together so um and then adding the background of expansive infiniteness um was a joy to make and that is it thank you I kind of feel this this particular piece almost has a little bit of a Salvador Dali feel to it too. A little. I, did, I took my first painting class because I studied biology in El Salvador Dali's hometown. Oh wow! <laughs> I love it. You absolutely captured the meditative um, experience, and I can see what you were saying is one hundred percent translated the um, inner journey, the peace, the, you know, the meditative effect. It's very, very calming. And I can smell the roses. I'm all about <laughs> the sensory. Thank it's, you. It's really nice. Yeah, I agree. It, that, that sort of spiraling into the center of each is just gorgeous. Yeah, I was, uh, when I saw it the first time too, I was thinking too, like, because I uh, do meditation too, I don't teach it, but, um, I was like, that would be actually a nice thing before I close my eyes, actually, to have that when I meditate or even like in a yoga studio or anything. It just calms um, so much somehow. And you get really lost in the little spirals, you know, from the rose. And also, I noticed one of them is a different color, yeah? Yeah. Yes. I, um, I wanted one to be separate than the rest so that it felt like a transition or also like a, a uniqueness that even though they're mirror images that there's a next phase to it so that it's more dynamic it, versus having all four the same. It's very beautiful. All right, thank you. Let's thank go to you. the next. Thank you. We have Linda. Oh, it's behind you. I can see it too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't know the name of the flower. I was trying to look it up on Google, but it's right down. A couple houses over and when like a hibiscus, right? It's a hibiscus. Yeah. Uh, similar. It is similar, but um, it may be a native plant as well, oh. California. And uh, so just, I also like to take photos. So I had been taking a lot of walks in the spring and taking pictures of um, <clears throat> beautiful photos of flowers. I mean, beautiful blooming flowers. And uh, also, I think the reason I called it New Spring was because my brother had had a heart attack in late winter <clears throat> and he almost died. He was in a, they had to put him in a coma and then he revived and he's doing really well. So I felt like it was a, he had a new lease on life. So I emotionally connected so much with him. I was spending time at his house. So when I drove, to Duarte towards the mountains. It was a beautiful day where the clouds are casting shadows and I didn't quite capture it, but emotionally I felt <clears throat> I was trying to translate that. And then the moon was just an afterthought of depth, like, you know, trying to expand. Um, and I love flowers. <laughs> Also, I love taking photos of flowers. So I have more possible paintings, some at the studio that I'm doing relating to that. I'm transported to Hawaii. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that mini vacation. <laughs> yeah, I love your colors too. They're so bold and just beautiful and it's- uh... 
And it just felt there, like all through the painting, there's just this wonderful rhyming of shapes, but subtle. But I love how the mountains pick up the dips of the flower. And... That's true, Kate. I, I definitely see that now. Really lovely. Is, is that, what is that? Is that a stamen? I'm sorry. Yes. Is that a she in the center to the yes. right? Yes. And then that's the shadow. I was trying to translate that <laughs> as the <clears throat> light casting the shadow mm. from. Mm. I like the simple composition. It's just kind of um, the mountain and the moon and the, the green all around it and the center point. Really soothing, right? That's kind of a, this is kind of a nice meditation piece too. That's true. Yeah. I also enjoy my meditation and yoga. So those are my go-to, you know, to keep, um, you know, being healthy. Well, thank you. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Thanks for me. <laughs> John. John is not here. Not here. Mm -hmm. Wow. John. Wow, those are beautiful. Here we go. Yeah. Michael. You're a chill feel to them. Michael Palladino. Hey. How's everybody? <laughs> Doing good. Thank you for showing with us. Oh, thanks for having me back again. Um, these are um, actually uh, I was I've been in the was in the, the East Village for you know thirty five years, but I got I ended up getting a studio about twenty years ago out here in Pennsylvania, and um, never really surrendered to the landscape to out here and since the pandemic I, I may be out here full-time I'm not sure but um <clears throat> but I'm a I'm more of a woodworker these days than anything and um uh and I tend to burn my wood and char it and um anyway I did, did a series of um of these landscapes um and I don't know why honestly <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, anyway I did them and um, I really explored took a lot of pictures photographs of the the winter around here and then um, and I was starting to to post them and I carved the frame they're they're small for me they're um, the centers are eight inch squares and the outside is, is um, 14 inch square and um, but for the bloom show um, I took the same series and did four more for the show and added um, added the blooms like so springtime was coming from winter and so uh, this is one and uh, I seem to be getting a lot of paths in these pictures pathways um, and then uh, not a few miles from here there's an apple orchard and um, you know I, I think I, I do like a, a creepy apple tree. Um, but anyway, so there's there's like the springtime kind of starting on the bottom, and um, so that's all. They're just kind of a study of um of kind of I don't know. I'm calling these woodlands, um, mostly fields, mostly trees. Um, I do have a big respect for uh, nature and for trees, but um, but these um. The, this group has a little bit of a, the, the bloom coming in, you know, to welcome the summertime. So, uh, I they're so are, in they, are they photographs, Michael? They're based on photographs. Um, I, I started, the, they're on um, oil, oil paint, oil paper, which, which is with cold wax and oil paint. So, mm. um, so I kind of just take my paper, um, tape it down. I, I trace this piece of wood um, that the artwork's on. So it's like an eight inch square. And then I do an abstract 
painting with oil and wax. And then I'm printing my photograph again, and it's been manipulated a bit in Photoshop. Um, you know, so I'm taking out the color and, and I'm kind of enhancing things. I'm printing that on a silk. It's it's not quite organza, but it's a it's a it's a silk material that um, that's that's transparent. You know, it's 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 um, it's got a weave to it, but it's also if you hold it up to the light, um, you can see through it. So then I kind of while the wax and oil paint is still wet, I push that into the panel. So it kind of gives me, um, it's like my cheating technique of, 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 of the detail of, of the branches and, and, you know, kind of pulls it all together a little more than abstract. And then I paint more wax and more oil on top of it to bring it a little more abstract again. So, so it's kind of alternative photography, um, uh, I don't know. And then I designed the, the frames and I carved that um, for this as well. And um, so. It's a lovely effect. It's really the color in the second one, the, it's very beautiful. Thanks. So, um, yeah, so like, so this one um, that's up, you know, like I actually just, just mix the wax with the oil paint and, and, and put my readers on and, and, you know, and mixed a little bit of the red and it just went and I tapped it, you know. Um, so I don't know. Um, I think these are pretty tight for me, I would say almost. Um, but again, like it, it was a study in, in, in this, um, you know, in, 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 in what these things are. I mean, I, it was mostly about the, the tree lines around here. Um, you know, they, there's a lot of fields and a lot of these really kind of beautiful during the winter time a lot of really beautiful um you know naked raw viney trees separating fields with like a gray sky in the winter time and i think that's kind of what i was attracted to and so um um I love the idea of the combination of the photograph and using paint and how to make that work, because I don't think that's an easy thing to do, you know, but it's really worked in this really beautifully. Thanks. Yeah, I'm glad you talked about the process because it is, I mean, they're just stunning and intricate and it, it captures that, um, like the dimness of winter light and yet it, it it just makes it pop because of the intricacy of the branches. The sky is just popping behind it. And I've, I've never played with cold wax, but it's an amazing effect. No, I, I was completely suckered. Um, and everybody's giving away every secret. So Google it and you'll, <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll get like a hundred um, videos. And it's it's not that hard, particularly. I, I was an, an encaustic wax painter over photographs like really 30 years ago. Um, but then, you know, then the world kind of caught up or at least maybe because you can see, I mean, you Google encaustic now and everybody in the world is, yeah. you know, wants to post a video on it and tell you that's still, it's life story. And, um, you know, and it, so I don't know, I just, um, the photographs actually look I, I print out a photograph as well to use as a reference and um and they're kind of good but i just kind of like i think i think there's so many good photographers out there now with with everybody with a really good phone in their pocket in every inch of the world can really pretty much get a really good photograph you know what i mean like like it's it's not it's not that hard I mean, of course, you know what I'm saying, but, but anyway, I just thought maybe I should mix it up a little bit because, um, anyway. <laughs> Fantastic, Great. Michael. There's so much energy in this. I, you know, it's almost like the trees are electrified, like they're, you know, static electricity and, you know, the branch is just reaching up with such energy to touch the sky. Um, and then you have this gentle peacefulness of the flowers below it. Um, and the work on the frames, you, you just really nailed every single detail, nailed it. 
And I love your process is so involved, so many techniques to make this object of beauty. You really went above and beyond. It's just spectacular. It's absolutely breathtaking. Well, thank you. <laughs> I have to agree with, uh, with you. Uh, the thing is too, like when you just said too, you know, everybody has like a phone now and the phones are probably better than our cameras almost, you know, certain lenses. Um, and, um, but you took actually the time because there's so many, I mean, how, how we take photos, who's looking at their camera roll ever again after like a day or two, you know? So this is like, you put so much love in it too, to actually display something. And this is like in the beginning too, because when you didn't uh, talk about the framing and I was like, I bet he made them the frames himself too, because you did all this woodwork as well. And it's just beautiful. And the technique reminds me a little bit. We, uh, when I was a kid, we did something similar. We did, I think we just took a candle and rubbed it like on a piece of paper. And then we poured ink on it, ink on it and let it dry. And then we just took a really uh, sharp pencil and then we started, uh, you know, drawing and scraping like uh, the black off. And uh, it's just, yeah, it's just gorgeous. Thank you. Oh. Thank you guys. Um, thank you. I feel these pieces are kind of meditative too. And I love the frames that are kind of like almost William Morris or uh, a little bit of Art Nouveau feel to them. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I'm, I, I'm a little romantic. I'm a little old school. Um, um, and again, like, and you know, and thank you for noticing like the layers, like to me, I don't know. Sometimes I make things and it's more about the process than like kind of where I'm going. But I mean, um, and I like things to look simple, but I know, but I think to make sometimes to, to bring it to the next place, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a, like a little pain in the ass to do, but um, I don't know. Anyway, um, but anyway, um, um, I was glad to put the, um, the, the bloom, the Baruha, Baruhan um, in, into this group of work. And, um, and, and, and I have a new folder now. Um, I've been trying to do like winter into spring and I've been hiking. And, um, and again, I don't know if the computer changed, if I changed, if my, the camera, but the, the iPhone is actually better than my, my Canon my eight thousand dollar canon and so i've been going out taking like 300 pictures at a pop trying to get winter into spring and i have like three and a half thousand pictures in my spring folder so i may actually um i don't know if i'm going to add any green but um it's it's these same creepy things but but like moving into summertime so um anyway i got a lot of editing to do wow it just wow, you're a documentarian. Time and space, you captured it. <laughs> thank you, Michael. Oh, thank you, guys. Okay, that was it. Mm -hmm. Let me stop. Well done, everyone. Thank you, Connie and Eugene. What a fun experience. That was fun. Thank you all for coming. Yeah, thanks for hosting again. Yeah. Um, Good to meet everybody.